Yo, what up, Internet? Welcome to Bricks and Beer, episode 75. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Um, tonight's beer, today's beer, wherever you are, is uh, the Three Weavers. It's the Seafair Kolsch style ale. It's pretty good. Local to LA. Gotta support the local peeps right now. Um, yeah, man. I hope you guys are doing well. This episode's gonna be a little long. It's gonna be a little, a little bit of effort. It's, you know, there's there's some moving parts now in the bricks and beer world. Um, so we're doing something new. We're we're trying we're trying something. Um, you know. So short story. I hang out with the bros, the Lego bros. We hang out. We have good times. They're Lego times. They're good times. Good Lego times. Uh, anyway, so we do that often, but now they're a little more spread out, so that's harder to do. Uh, Jeff recently moved, um, so I would like to go to his new spot. It's not impossible, except for, you know, the whole midst of the apocalypse thing. So, via the magic of the internet, we're going to go hang out with Jeff in the late night. So, here's Jeff. What up, internet? It's Jeff. Welcome to Bricks and Can Bricks and Beer Late Night Coffee Edition. Mm. Uh, I was actually going to put that right back in the fridge, but I had to do a thing with a popping can, right? Respect the brand. It's Late Night Fireball Whiskey. It's Tuesday. Uh... For those of you who still think the days of the week um, mean anything right now, cheers, everybody. Welcome to remote co-hosting with Jeff. <coughs> oh, that one was the hardest. You guys, you guys got to see the one that kind of kicked my ass. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Andrew has a new uh, format, and uh, it, I think it's a pretty good kind of idea. We're going to do sort of a short piece. I'm going to show some original content, and I'll take a little tour, because I actually am somewhere else. I am in a different house. Look, uh, it's a house. Those are, those are kaiju up there. Wait, no. Uh, those are my son's kaiju collection, which occupy upper ledge anyway I'm not in the garage anymore uh, which means actually somebody might come out of that door over there or that door over there and ask me what the fuck I'm doing because <laughs> I didn't tell anybody I was going to do this and it's one o'clock in the morning mm -mm. all right so I'm gonna jump straight into original content um, I'm going to go backwards the most recent thing that I threw together was the space slug which, since I am like now the third person to post a space slug on the internet, although I think this is the first space slug, um, I figured I'd call this the Emperor space slug. It's pretty big um, compared to the other two so far. I started with this crazy dino attack. Yeah, it was the theme that was about mutant dinosaurs that were sort of off model, which is why this T-Rex has these weird, like, underscale whatever these things are over here um but when i was shopping around for things for the techno mages build i found some dude who had this piece for 11 cents each and he had 11 of them and i just i had to buy them all it was like a dollar 21 you know for that level of crazy thinking i was going to use them as like like you know a big hand you know could you imagine there were like five of these and uh, anyway that didn't happen so uh this happened instead um, the head came up really quick. I knew I wanted to do something with these sluggy bits and, and that they would be down, not up like an actual slug, but he does have these little horns. Uh, you can maybe imagine that he's wearing a helmet and that his head actually does have this big red eye. Oh yeah, well, yeah, forget it. Um, and what took me so long though was the saddle because I 
I had a totally different concept. I was using these big um, old school backpacks and trying to sling them off the back to sort of loosely define this like cargo area, this backpacky, I'm a traveler kind of thing. Um, and, and it was a complete fail. And I showed the boys and I was like, done. I think, I think I need to bring it in a stud. And they were like, no, actually it's sort of like wrong in concept, you know, they were, they were you know, cool about it. Like the bros are, but, um, and then at one point I did some sort of, uh, like one by one chain thing for the strap. And I hated it. I hated the fact that this thing, the curves are so fun with this, like the curve of the piece itself, the curve of the tentacles, the curve of the thing, these guys up here, the, the curve of the chains, like it's all just got sort of nice sort of visual rhythm. Wee. And I wanted to do the least intrusive strap that I could think of. And I actually cut a piece. That's, this is one of those, uh, it's a stretcher piece. It's like a big long letter H in its original form. Um, I have a brown one from the original uh, Boga chase. I you know, just get General Grievous on his wheel bike. So I cut that thing up and it's this strap now. So I don't have anything to steer my boga with. <clears throat> uh, and that's about it. It's got a little compass. I kept him old school. I was thinking this might be a techno mages thing. So there should be some, you know, tech jazz somewhere. But I think what I was really thinking about was sort of Mobius. You know, Mobius. Oh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, Mobius, if you don't know who that is, and you probably do, um, is this wicked cool French guy who uh, drew amazing comics, and it was a that's a Mobius is a pen name, um, and he just does all these really great things of like people just riding, flying slabs of I don't even know what you know like they're just like yeah I'm just riding this I got this thing it flies, uh, you know uh, he does that a lot so I thought this kind of fit anyway. Um, so the other thing going on is because I moved, I just got the minifigs up. I'm not going to do a big thing about that right now. Although, although I got to reorganize. I have, I have two more stacks than I had. Um, whoop. this is precarious. Um, so I have expanded minifig display space, which is good because I was running out. I got some empty shelves up there. You can see that will eventually be minifigs, but right now they don't have to be. Uh, but I have limited mock space compared to what I had before. Um, so I am sort of doing like a big triage thing. There's a couple guys up there, you know, that are, and then the coffee table is full of this stuff. Um, I'm just kind of emptying out everything I can. Uh, so that'll be an interesting set of decisions. And of course it's taking forever because, well, you know, because time doesn't mean anything right now. You know, nothing's going on. You know, we we did dinner for breakfast tonight, and that was my big news. And at one point, I was like, "Did I take a shower today?" <laughs> you know, it turns out I did, but I have to really think about it. Um, you know, I tried to make latkes; they, they didn't hold together so good. But like four weeks ago, like there were fewer frozen potato products at the supermarket, so I was like, "I better get these shredded potatoes." Everybody's gonna be super psyched. I got these. Nah. Uh, oh, hey, I will just show you this. I managed to get every single Ninjago bad guy on one base plate. I'm digging these things. Gotta love Ninjago bad guys, man. There's just, there's just too many to even go into, but they're great. All right, next original item. I call this the Bones Malone. Uh, when I was taking apart the wall of faces that was that, that was circled around the Techno Mages diorama, um, I pulled a chunk that had this skull, and it also had this big plate sticking off to the side. And I was like, "Oh, I need to make a pirate ship that's got this going on." And um, so, uh, so eventually, it became this. It's pretty fun. It's got like there's like little action features. There's doors here, like these guys. So I like to imagine like, you know, it would pull up like above a space train, right? And these doors would open and these guys would drop down on cables or some shit. Or you're like flying through some space clouds and like you see the lit up windows. Like I imagine that's the, those are the gunners right there, right? There's all these guns in the front. They're, they're in the eyeballs. 
And maybe those light up and like, shh. Oh no, it's the Bones Malone. Um, <clears throat> some fun stickers on it. I had a really cool uh, water slide decal that was on here, but your water slide decals are they're fragile, fragile creatures. Uh, so I entered this in the every party at Exegol contest that Simon Lou ran, which was really fun. Um, but I had already built it and I just kind of, uh, shoehorned in a couple, um, workable fighters that I, I are not together anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so that was fun. It was an excellent contest, but I had just moved. I really wanted to do something completely original, but all my shit was still in crazy places. Um, going back further than that, there were earlier shows where I showed off this thing, which is like a space liner. And I think I talked about how I wanted to make it like, oh, it was a space liner, but now it's a pirate ship. But then at some point it just was like, no. So then I used the same engine configuration and I was like, oh, here's my pirate ship. So this is like a souped up Serenity, really, right? Anyway, I've talked about these before. But finally I was like, no, what I really wanted was this, but shorter. This is a little shorter, like two studs shorter. Um, it doesn't have, it's gonna have landing gear. I changed up the bottom so I could park some landing gear there. It's got like a hatch here. Doesn't have the fancy uh, shuttle bay that the other one has. Uh, I wanted to do some kind of cowboy bebop like landing deck thing with a little droppy door. But it's just not, there's not a whole lot of room with micro scale. I could still maybe do it, but Anyway, that's sort of a placeholder. The really cool thing that happened was I was experimenting with guns. Like, I wasn't even thinking this was going to have, be a ship with guns, right? So I took a single baby bow with a single one of these guys, and I parked it on this jumper. And I was like, how does that look, right? And yeah, it looked okay. It was a little thin. So I was like, all right, let me try a double. And, you know, I'll, of course, I'll pop that jumper out and I'll put in a regular one by two plate. But for the moment, I'll just drop it on the bar. And then I realized, oh, wait a second, that means it can rotate. So that's a fun little. Yeah, I think that was pretty cool. So I had to keep it. So they got guns, you know, but this has sort of the tight, compact, like you can imagine it swooping around. I'm, s I'm still working on this detail up here, the little bridge detail. Everything is, that's the, it, it's not quite what I want, but everything else is too bulky. So still working on it. Um, and then let's see, going back from there, this was right after BrickCon, I got these, um, dragon scale uh, double baby bow pieces in my goodie bag. So this is a flying seafood, or, oh my God, it's so dusty, it's gross. A flying seafood restaurant and, and also aquarium. I decided really kind of low ball at the bottom. It was hollow for the whole build. I was like, uh, uh, there's fish in there. Yeah, so, you know, this is like for the super rich, right? Like they fly around and they go to different planets and they get fish for their aquarium and then they eat them. You know, and so and these are all. All right, I don't know what happened. Uh, and, and maybe I never will. I was talking about this ship. Um, this is like nanoscale. Like every one of these is sort of a floor. So these are the shuttle bays right here, right? And they're like cockpit. It's probably down there. And then. Not very good dining room, pretty good dining room, really good dining room, really super good dining room. And like the best dining room is up there. Like, you know, I can imagine that's a huge just room made of glass, right? It's just it's like tables slung out there in space. Just rich people, just jerks. Um, but, but it looks good. It looks good up there. So, uh, I'm going to actually cut this pretty short in a second and um, climb up on a chair and show you what's on top of the hutch. That'll be good. Yeah, I'm going to show you the other side of the room. And uh, that is the part of the room that I have finished. That is the display. But I figured since I have all these mocks out, I would um, pick one. 
you know, there's all this history. I have all these guys up here because I want to build cars or spaceships for all of them. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. There's quite a few more of them than there are cars, but that's sort of how a big part of my creative process works. If there's a story, so there's a character. Um, sometimes the vehicle comes first and the character fits to the vehicle, sometimes the other way around, but um, that's like the interplay that is really fun for me. So a long time ago, um, well, a long, long time ago, I made this. This is not the exact one. This is a recreation. This has been around since at least the early aughts. Um, you can see that's transparent, clear uh, brick that is just gross, just gross. But sometime back in the 70s, before there were minifigures, my sister got this set that was a windmill. And it had a base of roof bricks with these corner bricks. And I had never seen those before. I loved them. It also had those little proto minifigure guys. They had like minifigure heads and minifigure hats. But they just had like little, you know, you know doing it. Oh, shit, I forgot. Um, <clears throat> in, in honor of the fact that, you know, Andrew is exploring new formats and stuff and and you know we're all about uh truth and advertising here or truth or or smack talk or something anyway so andrew is you know he's editing stuff now so you know andrew got me this shirt do you know about this yeah all right okay and then let's see how we got this let's see um, probably should have rehearsed this yep okay well, just, just pretend that that's like totally opaque and I've like blacked it out, right? I'm, have, I'm having trouble dealing with the non-mirror thing. There we go. All right, that's cool. And you know what? While we're here, let's see if I can have this Sharpie here. So let's see. Let's see. Let's do a little mustache. What do you think? You know? Yeah, that's pretty good, Andrew. Maybe you should give that a shot. A little soul patch? Yeah, try it out. All right, uh, so at one point I remembered this, years later I remembered this mock and it's so simple I was able to rebuild it, you know, part for part. And at the time I only had two of these, so it's a pretty good chance, 50-50 chance this is the original one, right? And I, there's this really jacked up tile, see all that jazz on the top there? And I, I remembered that was one because I only had probably three of these tiles back then. So um, I found that gross tile and stuck it on there. So this is like as close to the original that I could get. Um, and I built that because then I decided to make a minifig scale one. So uh, I guess this is some sort of weird limousine. That's it's like a hover car, right? And but both sides all over the bottom of it. So it can slide across the carpet really good. We've got... The chauffeur, um, yeah, the Asian guy, the Asian head from Orient Ex Oriental Expedition. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then in the back, we got my two characters there. Yeah, just, I'm just going to yank them out. It's pretty destructive, so I'm not going to show you that part. Um, but here's Spider Lawyer. Right, and I haven't named this lady yet, um, but she's a pretty fun amalgam. I had to swap her out, or I actually, Zach, my kid, he stole who the person who was in there to make a, a character. So, um, the best part is she, she's got this scar, right? She's one of those Ninjago hench people. I think she had the angler face, angler fish head. So, um, <clears throat> so she's got that scar. Uh, so she's like, but she's got the like really slick limousine, right? She's got one of these, right? Here's if when they make, you know, when they make the theme, like based on the shit that I build, and they do the micro ship, this is it. This is it, dogs. Get ready. All right. On that happy note, I'm gonna jump to tour time. Hey. So, did you ever get the feeling you might be doing it wrong? Because I'm having that feeling right now. Um, I think maybe I probably should be doing this with an iPhone instead and maybe not be in the picture. But anyhow, this is the top of the hutch. 
why is it the top of the hutch? Because I'm standing on a stool right now. Um, <clears throat> that's why. So this is where I have decided everything that's like an official Lego set will live. Starting with Ninjago City, which is just fantastic. I want to do like my buddy Morrow and build my own Ninjago City component at some point. So I'm going to hang on to this for a long time. Um, it's also a present, birthday present. 50th birthday present, so yay. I've added a little bit of action to it. Sorry, the light conditions in here are shit. So there you go. But there's a bad guy fighting Jay, who's like holding back lasers with his swords and stuff. Uh, meanwhile, Kai is on a date over here. Anyway. Um, and then it's like, dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. Because I just love those dinosaurs man the, the new ones like the current dinosaurs they're the bomb um ghostbusters another dinosaur yellow submarine space cruiser of course uh that's not a set that's my hack of the mystery machine to make it fly whoops um real fun part of this is the oh, come on be civil there we go is that those are all hippie flower pieces um, it's also kind of like a space Velma in there. Space Velma. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this down. Whoa, ah, whoa, ah, <laughs> um, that cool ass. I mean, I don't know if you guys haven't really got a chance to swoosh one of these around. It's pretty great. Um, of course, the Pete Reed exoskeleton. Um, Big Fig from a Ninjago set. I really like. To the Jeff. Yeah. Well, this is my first solo route, and I already pulled a Jeff. I clicked on the pad at some point while I was doing this, you know? So, but I took it as an opportunity to shift my stool over here. Um, I was just talking about big figs, because here's the Ant-Man one, or just excuse me, giant man one, another dinosaur, the land bounty, which is pretty cool. I'm probably gonna keep this one together the shortest. I just like some of the stuff going on here and I wanna imitate it, like especially this action in the front, very fun. Um, this is a more orthodox mystery machine, although I did upgrade the tires to something a little more beefy. It's just the boys in there, Scooby's in the back. Uh, and then what do we got? We got, let's do it again. I thought I pressed the button again. Um, this thing from Solo, because it's awesome, and this car, and that car, and the little turtle robot. Yeah, I have customized the drivers in this. There's some disaffected youths, space youths, you know? They don't give a shit. Um, but they're smart, and they're probably home right now, because, you know. Anyway, so uh, that is going to be it. Um, sorry for all the stupid shit, but, you know, it's kind of on brand. Um, maybe as Andrew brings more quality, I will drag us back down. You can count on us. Oh, look, more kaiju. All right. Hey, look. So that's what the rest of the hutch looks like. And there's all the crap up there. Yeah, there's... All kinds of other stuff and space to fill. Um, but hard choices to make because I definitely have more stuff than I have space right now. But eh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I hope this was fun. Um, we joke about the crappy uh, production values, but I really do want to get some real light going on next time. Uh, that's kind of why I chose the sets because you can just kind of look online what those are supposed to look like since I just showed you some blurs. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having a good time, good enough, wherever you're at. Uh, hang in there, kind of sucks, but um, I don't know. I'm kind of proud of the human race right now, you know? It's like this weird, like, you know, freak out, <laughs> but also <laughs> hang out. You know, it's like, like the low-key apocalypse. 
like keep wondering if the French are doing better because they invented ennui, like they were prepared for it. Um, <clears throat> uh, so anyway, if you are looking for ways to pass the time, uh, Andrew has mentioned this, but the, the, the on Instagram, Ryan Howiter, I think, um, has been doing some uh, really amazing um, challenges that I actually I have to admit I bailed on like like about a, at least a week ago. Um, but hey, why not build a space slug? You know, it's I think technically a, like something like a trend right now. Um, all that's really involved is that it's a guy riding a thing, and the thing has these. Um, you know, maybe you know, that, that, that's about it. You know, just you know, watch Andrew's video and then shout out to the dude who built the other one. He built the other one because Andrew, um, Andrew finished his before I finished my saddle. So, um, but I was showing this off on a bro call and he just kind of went with it. Very flattering, by the way. Thank you, bro. It's nice when that happens. Um, <clears throat> or another challenge, and that's what I'm going to tackle this next. Um, nine brick mech. 85 millimeters? Something like that. Basically, you build a mech. It's nine bricks tall. Obviously, micro scale. Um, I guess. Is that obvious? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that is Andrew's challenge. Um, so, you know, rock on, everybody. Build some shit. Put it up on video. Um, shout out to my buddy Merav Haber. Got me this bottle a long time ago. Uh, it was a long time ago, and I'm I'm just now I've probably passed the halfway mark tonight because that's how much I drink. <laughs> Kids, don't drink unless you're gonna be on YouTube. Um, shout out to all the bros tomorrow, and to Zach, and to Andrew. Uh, all of them uh, gave me the right amount of shit about my stupid saddle when it was stupid. And um, yeah, cheers, gang. I'm gonna I'm gonna peace out with this. Nice refreshing glass of water. Mm -hmm. Clink. Clink. So yeah, that's the co-host episode. It's, uh, you know, the production values are a little rough around these parts sometimes. But, you know, what else are you going to do right now? Um, you know, come hang out with us. This is, this is kind of like the reality. The internet connection is kind of shitty most of the time around these parts these days. So you get what you get. Um, quality slightly will improve. We'll see. I, I mean, like, there's an army of monkeys over there. Cheers, everybody.